Hello out there in Floss Tube land. I know it's been a while. My goodness. Um, just a brief uh, bringing you up to speed. Um, if you're new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. And if you're an old friend who's visited before, thanks again for remembering me. I know it has been ages. <laughs> um, and uh, the reason for that is just because you know life, life gets crazy, life gets messy, and you just got to dig your heels in and get through it and um, for the last few years that's what I've been doing and on top of that I haven't been really stitching that much I've been doing a lot of art and creative things but the stitching really hasn't um, seen a whole lot of progress where I would actually have enough to film about it so yeah that said now I'm hoping to turn over a new leaf where the stitching is getting equal time and um, things are going to be so much better and I'm looking forward to the stitching journey again. So what I have been up to is uh, the focus of this video and that will be my finish of The Desert Chatelaine by Martina Rosenberg. And I've added a few changes and adaptations so if you'd like to join me um, I'm not sure how long this video will be or if I'll be interrupted a thousand times. So, um, you know, kind of bear with me if you would be so kind. So let's get to it. Um, what, what this Chatelaine taught me was the joy of... Uh, gosh, how do I even explain it? Working on a project that um, you just... I had joy with every stitch and that's a big deal I mean you know typically you do have you know a reason that you're going to work on a project or start it or whatever but for this one in particular there was not a bad session on it um, Martina's patterns are very well thought out and very well designed um, they are a bit overwhelming if you're not really familiar with them at first but the key to that is to just take it one step at a time break it down into the little chunks and you know she walks you through the whole process of everything and um, now with her she has been my favorite designer for about 18 years so I've been collecting her patterns slowly kidding them up it's always a big deal to actually get to start one but over the years I have learned a few tricks on how to get around the whole expense uh, hurdle well I'll put it that way it's a hurdle because they are expensive if you were to just check all that out at once um, so I have several ways of getting around that that I'd like to share with you today um, number one is you can swap out materials and there's no law that says you have to use what is, you know, directed on a pattern, any pattern. Um, and you know what? If it fits your budget or your taste better, go with it. That's just my philosophy. You know, there's, it's not a crime to change a color. So that said, um, my Persian iris garden, that has a few um, variegated threads swapped out for... Um, just regular old DMC. Um, I'm not going to showcase the Persian Iris Garden today because this is going to be all about the Desert Chatelaine and also um, kidding up multiple ones. So, but the results of that, you, it's still a beautiful project. And, you know, whatever fiber you decide to use, it's going to be beautiful. But my new favorite way to have multiple Chatelaines on the go is. I will figure out what a particular Chatelaine needs to get it started to a certain point. Um, a lot of Martina's patterns are released in sections where they're called class files. And what that meant was you would sign up for this class or this mystery and you would get a section of the chart every month. So, you know, you get 12 pieces or you know 10 pieces of it or you know whatever chunks of the pattern until it was completed 
and <laughs> I have never been able to keep up with um, a class that way where you finish a section every month because I would buy the classes but I would not be able to afford to you know get the materials to start it. So over the years you know I've had all these class files waiting to be utilized and started and I finally just decided you know what I'm gonna figure out how much it takes to start the center part and so I would get those materials and get that section done and then as a reward for finishing that section I would then buy the materials to do the next section and you know it just the chatteling grows outward that way without having all the initial cost up front so you know the progress is happening and for me I feel justified spending the money on the materials to do that section and then the reward is I get to buy the next you know bunch of materials to do the next section you know and so on and so forth and that is what I've done with the desert channeling and it was highly motivating for me because you know you had that reward and you had the results of what you've already done and so that just really appealed to me and going forward that's probably how I'm going to tackle my other ones now I have other channel lines that are works in progress and some that are ready to go I've just been saving them for a rainy day um, two of them I had out to get going because I had <laughs> taken me how many like a decade to get all the stuff for them and they've been waiting and waiting and waiting and that kind of bugs me because that that's a big expense just sitting in a box so it needs to come out and be loved and enjoyed so I'm hoping that this year will be a better um, opportunity for that the last couple ones were kind of a wash for really much of anything because things were so crazy and busy and so forth but now things are different things have settled down and I'm hoping to get back to the way things work of course, you know, we had all the COVID crazy last year. It's still going on. Things are weird. I don't like any of it, and I just wish it would all go away. But, you know, if wishes were horses, you know how it goes. So, you know, on the upside, now that um, that's all going on and there's really nothing else happening, there has been a lot of more of creative pursuits happening for me. I mean, our schedule didn't really change much COVID-wise, but still, you know, it closed a lot of things that we would have done normally. So, you know, there was that even more time spent at home than what we normally would. And I'm sure the same goes for a lot of people everywhere. But it'll be nice when it's finally over with. We just gotta plug through it. So, that has been pretty much what I've been up to. So let's uh, get into seeing this big chatelaine and um, then I will discuss the changes that I've done. Um, oh, gosh, I almost forgot. Um, before I uh, get off the topic of kitting up a chatelaine, another tip that I'd like to pass on is so many of Martina's patterns call for the same color threads um, in the Gloriana's and the water lilies and the silken colors um, and I don't have any of the MPIs I've never used the MPIs I've always switched those out for DMC and used DMC instead but so many of her patterns call for the same um, threads and you know what they can share that's another um, little uh, fantastic trick because now I finished the desert channel lane and these are the leftover silks. These are just the silks. There's no cottons in here. And there's a lot of them. Um, in a lot of the case, or I'm sorry, a lot of the class files, Martina will list how many. Um, lengths of thread that you're going to need. So it might be like two yards of one color, four yards of another color, and then from there you can go and figure out if that color is going to be needed in another channel lane, then they can share. 
and that's going to save you a huge cost because you're not buying double the amount of thread for you know a project that's that could easily share with another one and now that the channel line is done I'm going to be taking this apart because there are a lot of colors in here that I can then share the love with different chatelines in my collection that um, don't have this stuff and for that reason <laughs> I have done a lot of homework to see well if I have this in this one then I'll make a note on the chart and the folder that I keep them in this could share with desert this can share with misty morning vineyard this can share with Egypt you know all the other ones that I have waiting to be kitted or to be started they can share stuff it doesn't necessarily have to be you know that huge chunk of money for one and then a huge chunk of money for another one but then you left with all these leftover materials now granted these leftover materials could easily be used in anything else I mean there's there's no law says so that you know it has to be another channeling but for me having the multiple channeling projects on the go this is also another trick that you can get around having that big huge expense for each one they can share and that really cuts down your cost on kidding up multiple ones. and if you're like me like everyone um, there's a budget to keep in mind at all times so you know I'm always for finding a way around something that you know you can have your cake and eat it too so to speak now beads I went and ordered extra beads for this chatelaine simply because I wanted to add extra color to it but I'm gonna hold the bead pack up to the camera these are the beads that are left over so you can see that the bead pack does give you a generous amount and a few extras um, some of the crystals are extras because I've swapped them out with different ones that I've had and that was just personal preference another little um, tip that I'm going to pass on is these bead trays. I found this on Amazon. Let me get a close up of it. There. Um, they come in different styles. If you just um, put in the search bar bead tray or wooden bead tray, these come up. This was fantastic because it is deep enough to hold the crystals in the little sections and um, I just used washi tape with um, the number or the symbol of the bead and um, it has a clear acrylic lid Let's see if I can get the magnet on there there's the magnet right there with magnets and it just works slick because you have them all right there yeah I in the past I've just been using like glue these little beaded wells that have little plastic caps on them but they were a pain in the butt to get the needle in there to get your bead on and you know keep sewing it this was godsend and I'll probably be using this for other beadwork projects in the future well um, at least for the needlework ones because my other beadwork projects that wouldn't be big enough that's just the nature of it so um when I showcase the chatelaine, I'll show um, where these extra beads were added and all the different changes that I did. Um, I'll use a pointer and um, we'll get all the gory little details of uh, this uh, chatelaine journey. Another um, bead that I'm going to show you before I bring the chatelaine up is these are the turquoise stones. Well, they're not turquoise, not genuine turquoise. They're a dyed howlite, and you can get these from Hobby Lobby, Michaels, very inexpensively. I think, uh, let's see, I think it was like four dollars, and I got it for half off. And it came with this two strands, two or three strands of all these stones on there. Um, I wanted to include turquoise on my desert chatelaine because 
you know, that is about as southwest as you can get. And that's my birthstone and one of my favorites. So it needed to be on there. So without further ado, let's bring the chat line up and um, for viewing. And then I will rig something up so that we can get a close up of it and I can show you all the different changes and substitutions that I did. So here is the Desert Chatelaine. Hey, this is working out better than I thought. I wasn't sure how this would go. All right. Let me get it propped up here. All right. So we'll work our way from the top down. Just bear with me. All right. So starting up here. There we go. That's better. Okay, up here, you can see where I stuck one of those um, turquoise or dyed howlite tur fake turquoise. Um, rock chips right there and on the Zuni bear I've added an extra bead in this little pocket of each of these uh, motifs I've also added extra beads in this band of beadwork here and they are the turquoise beads and I'll showcase those at the very end. Uh, oh no, wait, I have them right here. Never mind. So, that bead happens to be you can see that? It is my Yuki Delica 11O Opaque Turquoise Blue Luster number. DB0215 and I got it because it matches the blue crystals that are called for in the pattern and um, I also added them in this little corner here to go with that crystal um, it calls for the water lily that is this turquoise color but I wanted the bead uh, there instead So other, um, other extra beads are um, elsewhere in the pattern, but here it has been um, the turquoise bead, that purple bead is extra. Down in here, um, all of this is extra. I think the only ones that are called for are the teal greenish ones, there and there, and I added the rest of them. Um, just um, substituting them out that had stitches, I put those there instead. Now in this scene here, this panel, this is charted, whoops, sorry, this is charted um, and I stitched it as charted. I added the horse myself because that is my Mustang Tango, or I should say that's her representation. She came from Fish Creek, Nevada, so I wanted to include her on this project. And she is just stitched with uh, DMC, and I stitched everything kind of up to this area, left this blank, and then just drew her in and filled in the rest with the called for. Moving on to over this direction. In this one, I did not do the back stitching. Um, it calls for, I think, the Rainbow Gallery thread, gold thread, to be back stitching all of this cactus. And then there's also some green grasses. And I just eliminated them. I didn't care for the look, so I didn't stitch them. And I kept it 
you know, pretty, you know, basic. Down here, um, the Roadrunner, he is as charted. However, I did change his legs to look more realistic. Um, again, that's just me. I, I like things to look more realistic. So I've changed his legs a bit. And then also this bird. I've changed um, the orientation of its head and feet. Um, if you know what the original pattern has, the feet kind of stick out straight behind it. And uh, I just thought it would look nicer if the feet were a bit tucked under it. But that was just my personal preference. Um, down here in this border, I've added extra beads, um, the purple, the turquoise, those are the extra ones because uh, normally there's just a bead in the very corner and then a, a water lily, I think, this purple watercolor, or water lily is in there instead, but I've just switched the whole thing to be all of beadwork and then these beads all through here, I've added extra. This um, Swarovski cube was actually called for elsewhere in the pattern, and I'll get to that more in a bit. Um, I decided to put it here instead because I had swapped those out um, early on and wasn't going to use them, but then I thought, well, why not? So I stuck them there. So I'm going to roll up the chatelaine now and we'll go on to the next section. Oh my gosh. We'll get through this, I promise. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you guys for being so patient with me. Okay. There we go. Oh, maybe. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry, I'm so unprepared, or not very well prepared this morning. I forgot to talk about the other side. Goodness gracious. Let's just switch over to this for a bit. Okay. So on this panel, we have the jackrabbit. And I've also switched where these sections go. If you look at the original, I think the rattlesnake is up here. Um, I can't remember. I'd have to actually look it up. But anyway, I decided to put the jackrabbit at the top so it looks like he's upright and the same goes for the birds as well um, I did not stitch the beaded butterfly with him I thought that um, as it was he filled up the space quite nicely and there was enough of the same colors in him as the birds that I just felt the two corners balanced each other out so I didn't stitch the, the beadwork of the butterfly. And I probably won't. I will leave that off. Okay. Now, in this section, uh, let's see if I get the pointer where I need it to go. Okay. In this area, it calls for a rayon thread. And I have instead substituted up here in this storm cloud. I have instead substituted a cranic blending filament. And it's 060. And there is the information. Wait, sorry, the camera is backwards. There. 060. And it's kind of this bluish black thing. And I just put a little bit over the top of stitches that I already did. I did not use the the called for anchor marlet in this pattern at all or a substitute of DMC rayon. I just used a black DMC and then also a black silk just to get through it. But I was not going to deal with the anchor marlet <laughs> if I could help it because I'd heard horror stories. Okay, so down here, this hawk and the coyote down here, they are stitched over one. Um, 
not a problem. Um, they were done with DMC, um, the black in the DMC and up above in the storm clouds. I used three strands just to get adequate coverage because this is on a 28 count and uh, I didn't want fabric showing through. Here on the tree it is petite treasure braid and you do use one strand but I like the effect of that because it looks like old weathered tree bark. So I kept that. On the borders here I have added extra beads on the row closest to the, the purple and green and turquoise. So this whole thing here should be PBO1, um, Silver Treasure Braid. And I've not stitched that. Instead, I swapped that out with extra beads. And I will show that information at the very end. OK move on to the sides. On this panel, everything is stitched as called for. There we go. And um, I did not do any substitutions, but I did leave out some of the clouds. So, just because I wanted it to be a bright sunny kind of day in the desert you could think. So I didn't put too many clouds there. Going back to the middle again before I forget. <laughs> There's a lot of changes I didn't think of till now. These crystals here were originally these bicones up here. And I decided I love the color, but I wanted the flower shape. And since I wasn't using the flower shape crystals up in the, like on the Zuni Bear where I put that big turquoise chip, that is where the flower crystals were originally called for, but I've swapped them out. And so I thought they would look nice in here, but I like the color of these bicones better and having the crystals that were the same color as these just made this whole section too monochromatic. And so I used these um, Mill Hill Crystal Treasures, and I have their information here. That is what they are. And thanks again to Liz and Sherry at the Stitchery Nook in Osage, Iowa for coming to my rescue because I was short one of these. I mean, how ironic. I couldn't finish the project because I was short one of these crystals. And they came to my rescue. And it's always good to see them. So if you're ever in the neighborhood of Osage, Iowa, you need to go stop at the Stitchery Nook. You will not be disappointed. All right, let's move on a bit more. All right. Over here. There we go. Here we have the Thunderbird. I have uh, jewelry of this, which is kind of what inspired me to use the turquoise because that's what the jewelry looks like. It's a silver Thunderbird with a turquoise chip in it. And a real turquoise chip, I should say. So I wanted to replicate that on this project. Um, but it would have called for the crystal um, flower shapes instead. So that was the only change that I did to this panel here. Over here. Let's see if I can get it to go far enough over. You guys are so patient. Thank you. Over here on the Dreamcatcher, I decided to stitch that in a brown color. It calls for the black um, Rainbow Gallery Petite Treasure Braid, and I just didn't like um, the coverage or how that looked, so I just swapped it out for brown, 
and um, added the the turquoise. Um, the called for in the pattern said to stick the crystal flower right in the center of that, but I've made dream catchers before and um, this was kind of the orientation I used for those, so I wanted to replicate that in this project as well. In this scene, the only changes that I made were stitching less of the clouds. Again, I just wanted it to be a really bright sunny day out in the desert, so for that one I just eliminated some of the clouds. And uh, let's see, we're getting down toward the bottom, aren't we? I just roll it up a bit and we'll continue on. Okay. Over here we have the rattlesnake and um, he is stitched pretty much as charted. I'll do a close-up on his face when we when I get back behind the frame. Um, I've changed his face other than what was charted and I also rounded out his edges so he looked more serpentine and smooth. But I love how the beadwork looks on him. I mean just, uh, gosh how fun. Oops, I got a thread here. In uh, this center scene, let's move the camera a bit. This center scene here, I have added two little donkeys. Um, and there's a story and a reason why. Um, we've adopted um, a pair of burros and also my Mustang Tango. We've adopted them from the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management. And our burros came from Arizona. So here I have bugs and Daffy. And uh, they are stitched over one. I used the same materials as called for in the um, rest of the pattern. Um, the gray donkey is the same gray as in these feathers. The dark brown donkey is the same dark brown jacaranda as is used in the border at the very outermost edge. And before we go away from the center part, down here we have the Texas Longhorn and he's got the turquoise right there. And then over here to the other big change that I made for this project. This is a ringtail miner's cat. Um, there, It's a desert animal native to the southwest and uh, it's kind of like I don't know it kind of reminds me of a raccoon just because of the stripy tail but um, they are fairly common down there and it's one of my favorite desert animals scorpions are not my favorite desert animals I hate scorpions I've never met one but I've seen enough you know preserved ones that blah so I was not going to stitch the scorpion. I wanted something cute and fuzzy instead and so I chose the ringtail cat. Um, I just freehanded him in. I plan on charting him up and uh, making that available for people who would be interested in um, utilizing him. He is stitched in the same colors as the rest of the project so that he looks coordinated with it. So and he was very easy to do. This, this brown is one color, his ears are one color, the black and then the iron gray or whatever. So very easy, quick, and for me he was a, a better candidate than a scorpion which is why he's there. Now other changes that I did, these cactus that go all the way around, um, they are charted to be black. I think black marlet or black DMC, I'm not sure which, but I decided that I wanted a green and so um, I chose a green water or green silken colors 
called Dark Forest. And I will have the information here. This is what they look like. Oops. And there is the tag. So that was my solution to that because I just felt that they are a rather large feature of the design and with all of the borders being black and the silhouettes in black and the black silhouettes out here at the edge it was a lot of black in the project and I wanted it to be colorful so I opted to go for a variegated green just to you know liven things up a bit the other solution I did for having so much black in the project was all of these borders here and um, here you know all of this black for the borders and frames and so forth I've stitched that in a black silk I think it was uh, silken colors zero zero black or it's just silken colors plain black and um, my rationale behind that was there's so much of these borders in there and it's kind of boring stitching but having changed it to the silk made it enjoyable I actually looked forward to using it and that made the borders fly a lot faster than if I had decided to stick with the DMC just because it was a joy to stitch and therefore I was motivated to do it you know we gotta choose our battles right so I'm just going to finish up here now with a close-up of the little critters so you can get a better look at them okay. I can't hardly see what I'm doing here please be patient all right, so there is the ringtail kitty or ringtail cat, and the burrows, and the snake. And I needed to make him look more realistic. So there we have it the desert chatelaine. And my journey with it. So now, if we could uh, let's see, I have some notes here. Some of the fibers I did need to get extra, and that was partly due to my stitching it on 28 count, and partly due to my having used it in other areas of the project for like the animals and stitch that I changed to it. Um, Let's see here. Um, I'm just reading my notes. Thanks for being patient. Okay, so grape water lilies. Now that would be the purple that you see in the beadwork border, like right here. That is that color. And it's also used in this uh, let me get a section of it in this beadwork here. There's a lot of grape used. So what I ran into was at the very beginning, I did do a mistake on the innermost border here. And that was these specialty threads here. I went right to it. These um, specialty stitches here um, call for three strands, and I had just automatically gone and had done two, you know, wasn't thinking, didn't read the directions properly, and I got, oh, maybe eight of them done before I realized my mistake and thought, oh, snap. So I picked all that out, but um, it still made it short for what I needed for the project. And so I did have to order another skein. Not a problem because it's called for in other chatelaines and so they can share because I didn't even have that color otherwise because I knew that, you know, this one would call for it so I wasn't going to buy it until I knew it 
And so that kind of saved me there because I needed a little bit for this one, but now I have pretty much a full skein. I think I was short maybe seven inches to finish um, the desert one. So that one I did need to get a little extra. I, I'm guessing it was probably because I screwed up in the beginning with those specialty stitches because, you know, I wasn't paying attention. So I was a little bit short and um, had to order another one. Um, I'm guessing typically that that's not the case for that color, but it's, it is something to be aware of. If you have to frog it at any point, you're probably going to need to buy another one, but you can use it for other channel ones. Um, I did need um, extra, I did need an extra jacaranda, which is dark brown of this uh, rawhide. Oh, let me bring it up a little more. It is the dark brown of this uh, rawhide border coming down. Oh, my gosh. Ah, oh, God, it's Monday. Can you tell? Down here. That dark brown color and that leather work border. I did need an extra one. Now, that could be because that I used some of it for that little donkey. So I was short again, just a very small amount, but I did need to order another one. But it's a very commonly used um, fiber in the other chatelains, so I'm not worried because they can just have it. Um, one of the colors that did not use a lot was this pink. It's uh, right here in these cactus flowers. And then it's also used in these flowers across this top seam. Oh, let me see if I can bring it up there. Okay. So, there. It's uh, used along the base for these flowers. And it's also used for the little blooms in this round um, cactus border. It goes all the way around and it uses those. Um, let me see what color that was particularly. It is Antique Roses. Um, that is, oh, I'm sorry. There is another place that it is also used. It is also used here in these um, specialty stitches on that cactus. So you really don't need a whole lot. It is used in these corners, three of them. The cactus, little flower here, and then also on this scene going across, it's the pink flowers. Um, so not a whole lot of that one used at all. I love the effect of it. It is uh, pretty variegated, at least the skein that I got was. Um, I'm not sure how, you know, standard across the board that is, but it, you know, it is what it is. Uh, that one I could probably have swapped out. I just did not because I wasn't sure where all it would be used. So... Here again, we got lots going on with this project. Get orientated here. There we go. Now the light's better. Sorry for that. Okay. The Desert Chatelaine. Now, any guesses as to how many hours <laughs> that, that baby took? 441. I kept track. But, my gosh, you know. So, then, when you break it down that way, you have 441 hours. Um, the cost of a chatelaine is, you know, it varies, but, you know, 
what else can you do for four hundred and forty one hours that cheaply you know could you watch four hundred movies that cheap no not at all so you know yes they are a big project they're a big investment of time and resources but oh my gosh what a joy what a journey now that um now that it's finished i'll have to figure out some way of framing it i'm not sure when that'll be but i have some ideas in mind of what i'd like to do with it so if you've lasted this long <sighs> Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope it was um, a pleasure. It's been a pleasure for me to um, have you visit. Um, I really missed Floss Tube, and I really need to get back to the way life was. Um, it feels like ages ago. So on that note, um, I hope to be making some videos in future. I got um, lots of big plans. Um, for getting back into this um, whole genre of what I used to spend so much time on, it'd be nice to you know, spend more time on it again. And so, in retrospect, um, I have one uh, last bit of thing that I've been working on lately, and it's been a very fun project that I'd like to pass on and um, see if other people would be interested in trying it. Um, I found it very, very handy. And that is this little book that I've put together to keep track of all of my projects. And yeah, it's pretty fat, which means I should get busy working on this stuff. Um, it's just a simple three ring binder. It's a little smaller and I've covered it with fabric and um, scrapbooking paper. And then on the inside, each tab kind of holds a different um, genre. And then for each page, let's see here, um, has all the information that I need. And then on the back, it's a tally of how many hours have been spent on that project. Game changer, because now all of my stuff is in one easy access thing. I don't have to search through a journal or dig out certain planners to find when it was started or how many hours are on it. It's been a game changer and enabled me to get far more organized and move forward with a lot of the projects, especially some of these older ones. The other thing that I've created was this one to keep track of all of my geisha patterns and this one I am very proud of because oh it just turned out so pretty inside I'll show you the interior it is covered in fabric and scrapbooking paper and then the little scenes there are origami paper which I do not do origami but okay. and then some fabric trim to tie it all together. And then these tabs are just uh, scrapbooking paper that I cut the regular shape. And now each project has its own section. This is a game changer. Now if I could just find one for my Celtic ladies. Mm. However, finding Celtic fabric has been a lot harder than finding geisha fabric. So I am raring to go with this um, stitching adventure again and uh, hopefully get some projects done. March will be focused primarily on my Lavender and Lace Celtic Ladies. Um, through the years I've always um, focused primarily on those for that month and then in April when the Cherry Blossom Festival is happening over in Japan and I'm really going to jump into the, the geishas and uh, oh it's going to be so fun I can't wait. So, if you've uh, made it to the end of this video, um, you deserve a medal, because I know I've rambled on quite a bit, but I want to thank you for joining me here today, and I really want to thank you for even remembering <laughs> to um, accompany me here on this journey. Uh, I primarily keep track of my artistic endeavors on Instagram, and that's the same name as my YouTube channel, 
Cowgirl Kate Paints Aplenty. So if you'd like to visit me over there, I tend to do more daily uh, frequent postings there of uh, my farm life, my art career stuff, and also the needlework. So thank you for coming. Thank you for stopping by. Take care. Stay safe out there. And bless you.